this ain't in you. We believe God is real because what we've been through. We believe the kingdom in us, that's not the issue. We believe that you were sent and who sent you to this day, we still believe. switch every pitch that they flick we ain't never gonna miss nothing will fall from the sky so you gotta mention this so if the kingdom at hand then you must be laying bricks with your hands made for fixing breaking grabbing pushing saving taking your eyes are the attachments to your brain for reaction your words can't be heard but your hands do the action yeah we ain't slacking we ain't never slacking yeah we ain't lacking, we get what we asking, yeah. Came through the fire, now we all shining. Now our power behind us in a perfect alignment. So no disease, demon, or any tyrant gon' stop us from being the people that we desiring. So from here on forward, we keep using pressure. Cause anything else is a losing yeah. effort. Y'all read, but please, this ain't near you. We believe God is real cause what we've been through. We believe the kingdom in us, that's not the issue. We believe that you were sent, and who sent you to this day, we still believe. To this day, we still believe. We got God on our mind till we see. To this day, we still believe. Got our people in our heart, and they will never leave. Don't yeah. they make it hard to breathe. Shalom, shalom, y'all. Man, my brother, <laughs> shout out to him once again. My brother, Yohana82, sent me this this morning. I forgot we recorded it, man. My brother, John Boy, hitting him again, man. All praises to the Most High. Every time me and that brother get to connect and put something down for the kingdom, man. My brother, Yohana82, said he wanted us to do a, um, like a Best of Both Worlds type album. I'm down. Come on, brother John. Let's make it happen. Short it. <laughs> Man, this week, there's so much going on in the world. But the most important thing, like, we can't never let our minds stray from the most important thing that's going on out of everything going on is the most high. And what is our duty? To fear him and keep his commandments. That's the duty of all men. And what he love? Our praises, man. So right now, what we're going to do is just bless him. We're going to read Psalms that's all about blessing him and, you know, giving him the praise that he so richly deserves. Give me one second. I'm back. This is Psalms 103. And we're going to stop in between and explain some things and stuff like that. But we're going to read this whole psalm. That's going to be our Sabbath worship this week, man. That's how we're going to do it. This is Psalm 103, Psalm of David. Bless Yah, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And I know some of y'all probably sung that, because I know I did when I read it, because there's so many songs that we used to sing in church growing up that, that had that in it. Bless Yah, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Psalm 68 and 19 said he daily loads us with benefits. And those are his gifts that he gives to us. Lamentations 3 and 23 said his mercies are new every morning so he hook us up every day of our lives so we should never forget if we wake up and we got a sound mind and everything working and everything doing what it's supposed to be doing that's all the more reason just to give him the praise for real this is verse three who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases the wisdom of solomon chapter 16 verse 12 says for it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster, which is like ointment, that restored them to health. But thy word, O Yah, which healeth all things. So his word has got the cure for anything that we might be suffering with. And he's the one who heals our diseases. We read that last week. Like he might use a doctor, might use a pharmacist, might use an herbalist or whoever he might use. But all the praises go back to him because indirectly he was in there if you got healed. You feel me? I don't care, speak on them ones they're doing on the other side. But a lot of times that come with a, they come back for some payment on what they do. So I'd rather get mine from the Most High who, who upbraid of not. He don't take back what he give us. His gifts and callings are without repentance. To me, he don't change his mind once he give us something. 
And this is verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. So he gives us loving kindness and tender mercy. He's very tender and kind towards his, his children. The verse 5. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things. I just got friends eating me some butter, pecan, and ice cream. And I thank him for that good thing he satisfied my mouth with. And that good fish and um, mixed veggies. All praise hallelujah. So it was good. <laughs> Y'all probably see my little this. <laughs> It'll be gone by summertime. Most how willing we working on it. This is verse 5 once again. Let's start again. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Man, I be at work. And even though I got all this gray, nobody really believes when I tell them, like the people in the building, how old I really am. My dad used to always say, you look like a boy with a bald head. I know he'll say something about this great, though. He'd probably be teasing me on the regular. But all love, though, just make us look more alike, so he probably would love it. <laughs> Man, I, love, I wonder what my mama would say about it, too. This is verse 6. Yah executive righteousness and judgment for the oppressed. I'm patiently waiting for those days, man. I know it's coming. Got to keep the faith and say, woe be to those who lose faith and the sinner who tries to have it both ways. You know, some people, hey, I'm waiting on the Lord, but in the meantime, I'm going to do this over here too. Say, woe be unto those. Either you got your faith in him and you trust in him to do it, or you not. Not saying that you ain't supposed to do nothing, but anything that's contrary to what his will for you is, you do that because you lack faith that he's going to make it happen. You're in trouble. You in trouble. Ain't this what sweet daddy used to say to JJ? This is verse 6. Let's start that again. Yah executed righteousness and judgment for the oppressed. Verse 7. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. They seen it firsthand. They right there seen it when he parted that sea and when he did all those different, sent all those different plagues so that Pharaoh would let the Most High's people go. So they know firsthand and they pass that information down to us and that's how we know. Verse 8. Yah is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. And that made me think of Proverbs 19.11. We're going to read it from the New American Standard Bible. A person's discretion makes him slow to anger. And it is his glory to overlook an offense. So that's being like people always want to say they being godly and being godlike. That's one of the things that makes us godlike when we are slow to anger because we just read that he was slow to anger. So we being like him when we like that. And it's so funny that the world would flip that around. And I'm from Baltimore and I don't know where everybody out here is from that's watching. But I'm from Baltimore and the first thing somebody say when somebody offends you and you don't do nothing like, you're a whore, yo. You're a bitch, yo. <clears throat> I wouldn't take that if I was you. You gonna take that. Ooh, you better than me. But the scripture says it's your glory to overlook an offense. Not saying just let everybody do everything to you. You feel me? But, and sometimes also your action don't have to be cussing that person out, fighting that person. Your action could be just separating yourself from that person because I'm all about not letting nobody play with you. But you don't always have to get angry. You don't always have to react out of anger and do something that might cost you either your life or your freedom or the, your safety or the safety of others that you love. You know, it's ways just acting wisdom. That's all I'm saying. And like the scripture says, it's your glory to overlook a defense because some people ain't even worth getting mad about. I used to have a homeboy that I used to hang with a lot. And he always liked to crack and joke and play all the time. And I don't like stuff like that because I never liked the household that I grew up in. The cracks and jokes that we say would be like considered just going for the juggler straight from the beginning. We ain't play like them little superfluous jokes that people say that just like, oh, your mother so this, your mother so that. And they never even probably say your mother. But they will say stuff that we know stink. You know, like if you're fighting, like the hit that you got, the one hit of quitters, that's the ones that we're hit with. So it's like, because I know that the way I joke, people, you know, the first thing would come out of somebody's mouth, like, dang, that's messed up. You ain't had to say that. It would, they would just negate 
all the stuff that whoever said to me or about me leading up to me saying my one little thing. So because I know the way people respond to it, I tend to stay out of like we used to call it cracking, but people call it um, roasting and the dozens and all that type of stuff. I try to stay out of that stuff because I know the results that people, you know, might give. So I just, my response just be like, go ahead, yo. Or I just go ahead off by myself or something like that. And there's always be a person like, yo, you gonna take that? Ooh, ooh, we got you, yo. Ooh, you better say something. Ooh, you better do something. But knowing me, I know what I'm capable of. So therefore, I just remove myself from the situation. You know, sometimes that's wisdom. Just get out of there. That's what King David did when King Saul was after him. He had power. He had strength. He could have dealt with, I'm should pretty sure it gave him a formidable, made a formidable foe for him. But he chose to just separate himself. Sometimes we got to learn to look at the way we look at things, you know, and examine the way we look at things. Like the person that's fleeing or running is not always doing that because they're weak or because they're scared. Sometimes what they say, I saw a meme that said, I don't get out of there because I'm scared of the other person. I get out there because I'm scared of me. And <clears throat> what they say, do not suffer sin upon him. When, when somebody offends you, say, don't suffer sin upon him. So sometimes the best thing to do is get out of there. But people aren't taught that. People don't understand that a lot. But I'm hoping that people will get it, especially if you're watching now. Take note on that, man. Always, not always the person that's getting out of there and fleeing. That's weak. Sometimes they know their strength, and that's why they flee. This is verse 9. Talking about the Most High. I'm going to start back at verse 8, because I went on a little bit. Verse 8. Yah is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Verse 9, he will not always chide, which means scold or rebuke. Neither will he keep his anger forever. Psalm 35, another very popular one. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah for that. All praises. Verse 10, he have not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Us, not us. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Now make sure you're one of the ones that fear him. Because that's how you get that mercy. It ain't for everybody. It's for the ones that fear him. And this is verse 12. And I remember my granny reading this when I was a little, little one. When I read it, it made me think of her instantly. As far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. Now, what we got to do is stop chasing after the transgressions. After he is moving far away from us, we go chasing after the people, going chasing after the foolishness that he removed us from. So once he did his part, we got to do our part, make like maintenance. And make sure we don't chase after that stuff. That would be just like getting a surgery to remove your fat. And then you go and eating all the same stuff that made you fat in the first place. What was the point of getting the surgery? This is verse 13. As a father pity of his children, so Yah pity of them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. New Living Translation on that one says, For he knows how weak we are, he remembers that we are dust. And a lot of us need to remember that we are only dust too. This is Sirach Ecclesiasticus 10 and 9. And they ask, why are earth and ashes proud? Like, what you got to be conceited about? What do any of us have to be conceited about? We nothing but dust. And we decay while we live. That's what another verse in Ecclesiastes says. So let's be humble, man. Remember who we are. Ain't nobody better than nobody, man. You ain't better than nobody because you got a couple dollars. You ain't better than nobody because you have a position. You know, you still... Put your pants on one leg at a time, or you might jump into them, whatever the case may be, but you ain't not better than nobody. Humble yourself. Like Kendrick Lamar say, sit down. Be humble. <laughs> a lot of people need to make that day daily record that they play every day when they get up. And not saying that you should have low self-esteem, because as we always talk about here, value yourself at your true worth. Know you good at the things you're good at. Know you good at what you're good for. But know that you have your weaknesses too. And there's other people who may be good at the things that you're not good at. Like we talked about last week. Let's everybody show everybody respect. We all necessary parts in the body. If you're in the body. If you ain't in the body, we're not talking about you. <laughs> 
this is in the kid in the body you gotta just keep the commandments and do right or do your best to keep the commandments and do right and i'm not no what they call some people call themselves a gatekeeper and say who can be in and who can't be in and stuff like that definitely ain't part of them you definitely don't want to be around none of them out of here people try to test oh we got to observe you and see how you is like huh go ahead do what you doing i ain't asked to be hang out with y'all i'm cool where i'm at as long as heavenly father cool with me that's all i need that's the only approval i need and the only um acceptance that i need i've been alone all my life i've been a nerd and a geek ain't nobody want to hang out with me a very select few small circle and when I did get accepted into the quote unquote in crowd, I still just wasn't accepted. I ain't want to be part of it no more. <laughs> like, man, let me out of here. That's how y'all get down. No, thank you. This is verse 15. As for man, his days are as grace, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. And we read this, I believe it was week before, no, it was last week in the um, last Sabbath. We read this about in Psalm 37 about the wicked withering like grass and die. But uh, from here right here, we reading that it's going to happen to everybody. So this is Sirach 8 and 7. It says, rejoice not over thy greatest enemy being dead. But remember that we die all. It was a popular um, YouTuber that passed away recently. A lot of people was rejoicing in his death. But they still tend to forget that one day they're going to go that same way. And they probably don't want nobody rejoicing over them. So, ain't nothing to rejoice about, man. King David said one time, like, in one of the scriptures, I think we read it, like, last week, that he said, as the most high, not to kill his enemy. But let him live and let him be an example for other people to see how he's, what he's going to do so they won't do the same thing. So, we don't pray for nobody to die. We don't do that. This is... Verse 16, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Verse 17, but the mercy of Yah is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness is unto children's children. And then we back that up with Psalm 37, 25. I have been young, and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread like and what a lot of preachers used to say a lot of us is here right now because our parents prayers because our grandparents prayers most high continue that on and show that mercy to even the children and grandchildren said children children of those who keep his commandments and walk with him this is verse 18 to such as keep his covenant that's what we got to do and to those that remember his commandments to do them i just remember but to do them. Knowing is not enough. We must do. Shout out Bruce Lee for that one. This is verse 19. Yah has prepared his throne in the heavens. And his kingdom ruleth over all. So even if you think you're running things. They don't say it go. It ain't going. Even the, the, the what I'm plugging call him the most low. Had to come in the book of Job and ask the Most High's permission to, to touch Job's body. So if he got asked permission, I don't know who nobody else think they are. That they don't have to. That they can just do exactly what it is that they want. Now, it ain't flying. You can have all the plans in your heart. It said many of the plans in the man's heart. But the answer coming from the Most High. So if he don't say it go, it ain't going. Say take counsel together. It should come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand. But God is with us. This Isaiah 8 and 10. So if the Most High is with you, somebody can plot all they want. They say the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth his teeth. But the Most High laugh at him because he know that his day is coming. So you can think you're running things. You can think you're in charge. But trust and believe. If he don't say it's going to go, it ain't going. This is verse 20. Bless Yah, ye his angels that excel in strength. That do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. His angels listen to what he say, and they do what he tell them to do. Verse 21. Bless ye, Yah, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Verse 22. Bless Yah, all his works, and all places of his dominion. Bless Yah, O my soul. And with that being said, 
That's all we need to say right now. Everybody just need to say bless y'all. Hallelujah. Much love. And prayerfully we'll see each other again soon. Shalom, shalom.